Hey y'all, good morning. Welcome back to Southwest Victory Gardens. My name is Brandon and on this channel, we talk all about backyard gardening and desert climates. So thanks for checking out this video and checking out my channel. I really appreciate it. Today, we're gonna to continue our series on drip irrigation by installing a simple drip irrigation system onto a hose bib. So if you have a hose faucet anywhere around your property, you know, anywhere you can attach a hose to, uh, you can use a simple hose end timer like this orbit here uh, and use that to install a very simple drip irrigation system that will run you know, as frequently or as infrequently as you program it to. So uh, what you can do is install a, a drip irrigation system to a faucet so you don't have to do any underground plumbing. So there's no PVC, you, know, you don't need to call a plumber, there's no electrical wiring, you know, everything is above ground. And because we're in a desert, you don't have to worry you know, too much about freezing or any of that stuff. So this is something that you can leave you know, installed all year long and and really not have any problems uh, as far as you know freezing or getting damaged or anything like that so uh, what I want to do is show you how we can install uh, a simple system that you can use to water uh, you know containers raised beds or even in ground and sunken bed gardens so you can you know uh, use what the techniques that we show you today and modify them in any way using different components, you know, different drip irrigation pieces and use them to fit your garden. But what I wanna to do today is show you some of the most common things that uh, you may come across because we're gonna be installing, you know, uh, drip irrigation into raised beds and into large containers, which are very common, you know, in the Southwest. A lot of people use these for gardening here. And so these, I think, are very useful techniques that you can apply in a lot of different ways. So, you know, again, whether that's uh, your gardening and containers containers or raised beds or in ground, you know, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, take these methods and apply them. Um, so what we want to do first is show you some of the different components that we're going to be working with. Uh, and then from there, we can show you how we install those components uh, and then how we're going to actually, you know, uh, program our timer and everything like that. So let's go ahead and check out the different components first, and then we'll show you how to install them and, and go from there. So let's check that out. All right, everyone, here we go. Let's take a look. So uh, we're gonna use some basic irrigation components for connectors. So we're gonna be using these quarter inch barb connectors of different sizes, or excuse me, of different shapes. So you're gonna want a variety of those depending on your setup. And we're also gonna be using the half inch connectors. Now I'm gonna be using power lock fittings today. So power lock are these fittings here, as opposed to the compression type fittings, which are blue. So if you want more info on that, there's another video on it. Link is down below. Okay, so we're gonna start with our Orbit hose end timer. Uh, I wanna keep using the hose on this faucet. So in order for me to be able to use the hose and the timer for my irrigation, I'm gonna need a Y. So you're gonna wanna get some type of Y splitter if you're gonna wanna use the hose out of the same faucet. If you don't use the hose out of the same faucet, you don't need a Y, you can just go straight to the timer. Now from the timer, I'm gonna go into my basic setup here. I have a vacuum breaker that's gonna go to a filter, which is gonna go then to a pressure regulator, which is then gonna go to a conversion fitting that's gonna uh, be a compression converter that I'm gonna connect my poly tube to. So you can see I have a half inch black poly, the standard black poly tube that's going to be my main water supply and then for my beds and for my containers I'm going to be using this quarter inch drip line or dripper line or inline emitter tubing so this is a spaghetti type tubing that has an emitter spaced every six inches so um, we did a whole video on dripper line versus soaker hose versus drip tape so if you want to check out that video, there's also a link down below. And if you have any other questions on any of these different components, I did a video on all of that different stuff. Now, a few things that are gonna make your life a lot easier, especially with raised beds, is you can use uh, these um, pipe clamps here, either one-sided or two-sided, it doesn't matter. Uh, you probably want three-quarter inch, um, but a half inch can do as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna just use uh, deck screws for that. You can find whatever fastener you like. And then you may also want some of these landscape staples. They come in uh, different sizes. Um, these are the larger staples, but you can get smaller ones that work 
quite well. And that's just, you know, if you want to be nice and neat and tidy, I'll show you different ways that you can keep it neat and tidy without having to use the staples, but would recommend uh, using those as well. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is show you how to set up all these components right here. Oh, I forgot to mention some Teflon tape. You're gonna wanna use that. Um, so let's go to the hose bib now and show you how we're gonna hook all this stuff together and, and then run it into our garden. All right, so here we are. We've set everything up from the hose bib. So anywhere on your property you have a hose bib, you know, as long as um, you know you can uh, have the the room, you can attach a, a, a timer to it. Now there's different types of. Um, uh, filters and things that are shorter and so if you're in a really tight space you can you know make the adjustments but you can see here here's my Y so that allows me to split off if I want to run my hose I can run my hose and then keep it off whenever I'm not using it now that's gonna go right into my timer my vacuum breaker my filter pressure regulator and right here is where I'm gonna come out and uh, that's where my uh, poly tube is gonna come out of now once it comes out of here I can use um, you know T's or elbows or anything I want to split off and go in different directions but this is basically where everything is gonna be connected so let's uh, make sure everything works here I'll do a manual run one minute All right, there it goes, perfect. Now, uh, notice that uh, there's no leaks anywhere along here. That's really important. And with the Y, you know, you can use it and adjust it into different directions. So, but as soon as I come out of here, I'm gonna need to go underground. So I'm gonna have to go get my, uh, my pick and make a trench here. And then that way I can redirect my lines to where I want them to be. Um, and that way they're also not a tripping hazard and that kind of thing. So, all right, let's go ahead and connect our poly tube and our dripper line and we're almost done. all righty let's take a look at what we've done here all right so we're coming down now out of our compression fitting into that poly tube and i'm using uh fittings everywhere but you could uh if the tube you know is uh if you have enough space you can use you don't really need any fittings you know you can kind of make elbows and and then change the direction of the pipe just using the curvature of the pipe itself but I'm using all these fittings because I'm in a really tight space. So I'm coming out here, my main line, I split this way. I'm having one line come up into the raised beds and that's gonna go all the way down the raised beds that way. And you can see I've kept them in a straight line with my pipe fittings. So that's what I recommend the pipe strap for. So um, they are really super helpful. Otherwise, you know, the line will just flop around and get all you know. All right, so I tee off there. I come this way underground. I've trenched and now I'm coming up again and I'm going to go this way. This time I'm going um, out along my raised beds now. So this line I'm going to use to water my, my container garden, these blue tubs here, and I'm actually going to add more tubs there. So I'm going to be able to come straight up out of there and then water all of these containers. Now that line, I'm gonna use to water the raised beds on this side. Now I could just as easily have come, you just done this one line and come off this way and that way off of both sides of the line. But I don't wanna poke a million holes into the one line. And so because I got a lot of different things I wanna water, I just decided that I go ahead and split them up into two. So you can kind of see, you know, they run sort of parallel. And then at the very end here, we have our cap and then that's gonna allow me to drain the system if I ever need to. Right, so now that we got our main supply lines all set up and laid out, next step and final step before we bury the lines is to check for any leaks. So I'm going to run the timer using the manual setting and I'm going to check every threaded connection, everywhere I've put a coupler, and make sure I don't have any leaks. And once I've verified there's no leaks, I'm going to go ahead and bury my line. So now this is the first part of the project. This is all done. In the next video, what I want to do is show you how we can connect to the supply line using dripper line. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to use dripper line to water the raised beds and to water the containers. So uh, I hope you check out that video and I thank you for checking out this one. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time. Take care guys, bye.